Right. Hopefully. I know it's been quite a gap since you talked about this before, but um, you should know the fundamental counting principle. What's the that's the subject of the first section in here, six point one. How you can use fundamental counting principle to count things without actually counting every single one, right? Like in that in that question on the hockey teams there, we didn't say, well, let's see, there's Calgary versus Vancouver and there's uh, Calgary versus, like we didn't count every single one of the different games, right? You're counting without actually counting all the things. That's that's the first part of that. The second part was just looking at permutations. If you're if you have n objects. If you want to know permutations of all n of those, it's n factorial. If you have n objects, but you're only choosing r, the shorthand for that is npr. So like if you have 10 objects and you're choosing 7, where you care about the order, you say 10p7. The formula for that is n factorial, the number of arrangements of all of the objects, divided by the ones you do not choose, so n minus r factorial. That's the permutations formula. It's on that formula sheet you have. There is a calculator function for NPR. There's a factorial button on, your cal on most calculators, but uh, there's also this function on a lot of calculators. We're going to uh, look at now permutations when you have identical objects. Okay, Permutations when you have identical objects. So um, let's... Scroll down before we do this. So we we did permutations of let's just use letters for the sake of convenience here, A, B, C, and D. Permutations of that, there are four factorial different permutations of four different objects. If you made two of them the same, like that, then there's no longer that many, right? Because if I switch the two C's here, this doesn't change anything, right? Switching the two things that are identical does not change it. It doesn't make a new permutation if you have two identical things. It's less, okay? But the idea is how much less is it? How do you figure it out here? You might be able to see already how to do it. If these are all different, it's four factorial. If you make two the same, switching those two, how, how is this number? This is four factorial is 24, right? What's this going to be? It's going to be, yeah, why is it going to be 12? It is going to be 12. Why do you think it's going to be 12? Well, three letters would only be six, right? There's three different letters, but why is it half? The idea is that it's half as much because you look at, there's two the same. How many different ways could I switch around the two that are the same? How many different ways could I arrange these two things? I could do that or this, right? Put that one in front. The, for for any one for any one arrangement here, there's two different ways I could switch this, the two C's there, right? So it's actually going to be half as much. There is uh, something that illustrates this only. It doesn't use the uh, letters A, B, C, and D. It uses the letters A, B, E, and F for hopefully obvious reasons in a second here. Permutations of four different letters. So it's not suddenly that wait a sec, I don't know how to do it with E and F. I only know how to do it with, with C and D. It's just because you can easily change some of these letters. When we want to make them identical, this is this is written out for you, so it doesn't so you don't have to go through and write them all every time. When we want to make some identical, we're gonna change all the F's into an E here, right? Convert each F into an E. You can convert an F into an E pretty easily, right? That's the idea here to save you some time. Don't think it's confusing, okay? It's not confusing. <laughs> the letters are here just so that it makes you it makes it easier for you, right? Here is all the different ones. You have done this before. You've written them all out, okay? You've written them all out before only with C and D. There's 24 different ways here, 4 factorial. If two of the letters are the same, because that's what we're looking at now, permutations with identical <laughs> objects, if you had two E's instead of an E and an F, some of these would be the same. This one that, for instance, it says A, B, E, F would be the same as this one, right? Because switching the F and E no longer matters if those are identical, right? Okay, understand the concept here that those two are now the same. They used to count as two different things. How many do those count as now? 
Only one, right? Similarly, every other pair here, and this is why it's written out in an organized way to save us some time in thinking here. Those two are going to be the same as well because if I switch the two, the E and the F, it doesn't make a new thing here. That's That counts as one. And so on as you keep going here. That one and that one are going to be the same. This is written out in this order. This might, might, this might not be the order you would have written it out in, but this is the order so that you can see which ones match up here. There's another one. Each one of these is going to be... Uh, each pair is going to count as one. This is why there's, there's going to be 12 instead of 24. What you're thinking about here is it's the arrangements of all of them. It's four factorial, but we're dividing it by the arrangements of the ones that are identical. Those two are identical now. There are two factorial ways to arrange the ones that are identical. If you switch the ones that are identical, it doesn't make it a new thing. We're going to count this indirectly. We're going to count the arrangements of all of them. And we're going to divide by the arrangements of the ones that you, uh, the ones that are identical. All right? That's the most efficient way to count this. Okay? This is all, and this is the identical ones. Can you look at the next thing here and see what it turns out to be? Do the same sort of thing here. This is a little bit trickier. Converting the F's and E's to B's. You might have some difficulty with that. <laughs> oh dear. See, you're trying to make them all into, you're trying to make them so that all the, everything, so that we have three identical, right? This is three identical objects out of four. So this is, this is if you have A, B, B, B. You might be able to predict what the answer is going to be before you do this and use this as kind of a justification for that. I'm going to pause this while you do that. So did you convert all your uh, F's and E's to B's there? The question I asked you before was, uh, the first one we divided by two because there's two identical objects, and then I asked you, do you, does that mean you divide by three here because there's three identical objects? What's the answer to that question? No, you don't, right? It, we we uh, we didn't divide by two before. We actually divided by two factorial, which is the same thing when it's two, but when it's three, it's different, right? If you convert all of these to uh, b's here, every single one of the things on the first line here is a b b b, right? All of those are the same. All of these ones are all these are all the same. Okay, that's. That's all just A followed by three Bs here. And similarly, each of these is, all of those are the same if you do it. I won't bother uh, changing the letters, but I'm sure you went through and did it and saw it. There's actually only four ways you can arrange that. Okay, there's four permutations here. You could think about it like the second one is B, A, B, B. The third one is uh, B, A. B, A, B. And the fourth one is the three Bs first. When you have all objects the same except for one, actually, it's it's pretty quick to think about it if you just think about the place of the, the odd one out, the one that's different. It could come first, second, third, or fourth, right? If all of them are the same except for one, it could come in any one of the positions, right? And you can just think, well, there's four, right? The way you're going to get that indirectly is you're going to say, if they were all different, the way we just did, if they were all different, this is this is the permutations of all of them. There are three factorial permutations of any for any for the three identical ones, right? For the three identical ones here, there are there's six three factorial permutations. This is permutations of the identical ones. Okay, the identical ones there. In this thing up above here, right? If I erase the, if I erase all of these letters here, of the three that we made identical, there's six different permutations of those ones that are identical. If they were different, you can see all the different permutations. So you're counting it indirectly. You're saying four factorial gives me all of these, 
but I'm dividing by six because each, for any given one, there's six different ways the identical ones could be rearranged. So you're counting it indirectly. You're saying here's all of them, divide by how many for the identical objects. All right? Now, if you make different uh, pairs here, different for for five objects now, I better stop this and we can we can go on to this.